Okay, we got tech running. We got Michael Hartle with patience and grace. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Hartle, and I'm the founder of Tau Day and author of the Tau Manifesto. The subject of the Tau Manifesto is the circle constant. That is to say, the number that relates the circumference of a circle to its linear dimension. Now, the traditional choice for that linear dimension is just the width of the circle, the diameter d. And this leads to a traditional choice for the circle constant, which is c over d, usually called pi. Pi was uh, famously approximated by the great Greek mathematician Archimedes of Syracuse. In modern decimal notation, it appears little, as being a little over 3. C over d is 3.14159, 3 and so on. But there's something fishy about pi. <laughs> What's fishy about pi is that circles are not fundamentally about their diameters. The definition of a circle is the set of all points a particular distance, the radius away from a given point, the center. This suggests that perhaps a more natural choice for the circle constant is c over r. If you look at what pi is, it's c over d equals c over 2r. And that factor of 2 haunts us throughout mathematics, science, and engineering. If you multiply through by that factor of 2, you can see that c over 2, or c over r, is just 2 pi, numerically. And if you look back at the original approximation by Archimedes, in fact, he calculated both c over d and c over r. In modern decimal notation, it appears as 6.283185, and so on. Now, the first person in the modern era to notice this problem that I know of is a mathematician named Bob Pillay at the University of Utah. In 2001, he published an article called Pi is Wrong. Now, by that rather uh, provocative title, he didn't mean that pi is factually incorrect, but merely that pi is confusing and unnatural. And I read this shortly after it was published and was pretty much convinced right away. Now, Pillay introduced this idea of C over R being one turn, like a full turn of a circle. But he didn't really give it a name other than this, and he proposed a symbol that was, I, I think, not even very serious. It was a little strange, and it didn't really catch on. Now, I noticed that this paper was being cited on uh, some parts of the internet where uh, mathematically inclined people were known to frequent, say, Reddit or Hacker News. And so I th started meditating on this, this uh, idea of turn, turn, and I thought, well, maybe, maybe we could call this thing tau, use the Greek letter tau kind of looks like pi. It made me think of a circle constant. I started using it just on my own to see if it, if it worked, and I liked it. And later on, I found, in fact, that the word turn is derived from the Greek word tornos, which means lathe. So you can see there's our tau right there. So armed with this definition, tau equals 2 pi, I set out to hack geek culture and add this number this name to the world. So some of you may know about Pi Day, celebrated every March 14th, 3.14. In fact, there's a particularly important Pi Day coming up, which I'll mention briefly later on in this talk. So it was only natural to launch this idea on Tau Day, June 28th. So on June 28, 2010, at TauDay.com, I launched the Tau Manifesto. And it took off. It's got almost 45,000 likes on Facebook right now. Um, the next Pi Day, I was featured on CNN's Geek Out blog on Pi Day is Pi Under Attack. And it has become a thing that people know about. MIT changed its admissions time based on Tau. It used to be on Pi Day, now it's on Pi Day at Tau time, 628 on 314. Um, if you type a mathematical expression into Google, it will drop the result into a calculator and evaluate it. And if you evaluate tau over 2, it comes in as 3.14159. In fact, lots of computer programming languages have added tau. It's supported at the Khan Academy, lots of other places, yeah. And so I, I think it is the final crowning achievement and proof that I had successfully hacked geek culture. Last year, 
Tau appeared in the iconic geek comic strip XKCD, Pi versus Tau. I knew, I knew I'd won it. It's like, yeah, that's, that's it. All right. You can't beat XKCD. <laughs> So I hope I've convinced you that, that tau has become a phenomenon, but I haven't said anything to convince you that pi is wrong and that tau is any better. So in order to understand this, we need to start from the basics. Let's talk about circles and angles. Now, I'm sure many of you remember from high school trigonometry these special angles around the circle. I'll put them in degrees, which are still probably the most common way of talking about angles. So 30, 45, 60, up to 90 degrees for a right angle. 120 degrees, 180, 270, and then a full circle is 360 degrees. But for various reasons, degrees are not the preferred way of measuring angles in mathematics. Instead, mathematicians use what are called radians. So you take an arc length here, S, and you divide out by the radius R to get an angle theta, like this. Now, in terms of radians, written in terms of pi, these angles, appear like this, pi over 6, pi over 4, pi over 3, the right angle is pi over 2, 2 pi over 3. You may recall memorizing these angles in high school trigonometry. I certainly memorized these angles. But as we'll see, in fact, there's nothing to memorize. The problem is pi. Because if we think about what these angles are, they're really just particularly simple fractions of the full circle. So this here is just a twelfth. This is an eighth, a sixth, a fourth a third, a half, three-fourths, and then all the way around back to one. If we write these angles as radians in terms of tau, what we get is tau over 12, tau over 8, tau over 6, and so on around the rest of the circle, finally arriving back at one turn equals one tau. So this is basically like a one diagram proof to me that tau is right and pi is wrong. There are some other arguments though you'll get, especially mathematically sophisticated people will say, okay, well what about, what about Euler's identity? So let's talk about Euler's identity. This is a famous equation derived by the great Swiss mathematician Leonard Euler, and it looks like this. It involves exponentiation of the imaginary unit, i, and the circle constant. So e to the, pi, uh, e to the i pi equals negative one. But there's something fishy about this identity. <laughs> what is up with this negative sign? In fact, this is so ugly that it's almost always immediately rearranged to form e to the i pi plus one equals zero. And at this point, people like to make some sort of mystical statement about how this relates to the five most important numbers in mathematics, zero, one, i, e, and pi. Well, let's look at Euler's identity instead of in terms of pi, in terms of tau. It looks like this, e to the i tau equals one. So one is what's known in algebra as the multiplicative identity. It's also called unity sometimes. This says that the complex exponential of the circle constant is unity. It turns out that these exponentials are also related to rotations in the complex plane. You rotate by a particular angle, rotate uh, complex numbers. And so this represents the rotation by a full turn. And so what this says is that a rotation by one turn is one. It takes you all, it takes you all the way back to the beginning. So I submit that this should be known as Euler's identity. This is the most natural statement of Euler's identity. But you'd be amazed at how many people complain that this only relates four numbers. So I'd like to note for the record that e to the i tau equals one plus zero. <laughs> so this actually does relate the five most important numbers in mathematics. 0, 1, i, e, and tau. So can you think of anything, though? Well, these are some good arguments, but can anyone think of a formula that involves just pi by itself? Someone here must be able to think of a, a formula from your uh, geometric youth. It, that's a 4 thirds pi r cubed. But you're on the right track. Does anyone remember? Oh, so pi, pi d, that's just the definition of pi, c equals pi d. We've got it, we must have some pi's out there. Just a pi by itself, unadorned. Life of pi, that's, that's right. So what I'm, instead of the volume, think about the area. What's the area of a circle? 
pi r squared, right, just by itself. So let's talk about circular area. People say, well, there's just a pi. There's no two pi there. There's no half pi or anything like that. So circular area involves this formula, a equals pi r squared. But there's something fishy about this formula. <laughs> Why the sudden love for the radius? I thought that circles were about their diameters. Pi equals c over d. You really should write this to be consistent in terms of the diameter, and it looks like this, which isn't nearly as pretty. So to figure out what's going on here, let's take a look at the structure of, of this formula. In particular, I want you to look at this uh, power of two. This makes this formula what mathematicians call a quadratic form. Now, my background is in physics, so I'd like to show you some examples of quadratic forms in the elementary physics curriculum to give you a sense of the kind of patterns that these quadratic forms follow. We're going to start with the formula for the distance fallen. So suppose that you drop a ball. How far does it fall? Well, it falls a distance y equal to 1 half gt squared, where g is the acceleration due to gravity and t is the time fallen. The potential energy in a spring can be calculated by considering the stiffness of the spring, k, and the distance it stretched from equilibrium, x. The potential energy is 1 half kx squared. And finally, the kinetic energy is the energy of motion. If you take a puck and you hit it across the ice, the puck has mass m and velocity v. Its energy of motion is k equals 1 half mv squared. So let's return to the area of a circle. Recalling the definition of tau, it's c over r. We can multiply through by r and get that c is equal to tau r. We can then follow the proof that Archimedes of Syracuse made for the area of a circle. Archimedes didn't show that a equals pi r squared. Um, he didn't have modern algebraic notation. What Archimedes showed was that the area of a circle is the same as the area of a right triangle with height uh, equal to the radius and base equal to the circumference. We can then apply the formula for the area of a triangle, area equals 1 half base times height, equals 1 half circumference times radius. We can apply c equals tau r to get 1 half tau r squared. <laughs> so if you look at the pattern here, even in this case where pi supposedly shines, in fact, there's a missing factor of 2. So we come now to the final objection. What about puns? <laughs> pi is so much fun. You know, pi are round, pi in the sky. This just means you haven't fully accepted the doctrine of Taoism. <laughs> because as Taoists, we know that e to the i tau equals 1 says, be one with the tau. <laughs> a rotation by one turn is one may sound like a tautology. But in fact, it is the true nature of the tau. But we must remember that Taoism is based on reason, not on faith. Taoists are never pious. <laughs> so I hope you'll join me in celebrating the true circle constant, tau equals c over r. And I mentioned before that there was an important pi day coming up. This is uh, 3.1415, 314, 15. It's a, it's a big pi day, the pi day, pi day of the century. So I'd like to, to say that, I'd like, like to note that Tau will have its revenge. And I want to announce here at Bill for the first time, party at my place, Tau Day, June 28th, 2031, 628 Thank you. That was totally great. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>